Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have that fist bump here. We're kicking things off. Yeah, Kyle is going to be starting off this game. Plenty of day twos behind his belt, and he's hopping into another one here. We have 194 players here today in our day two, and two of them are right here oh, we're sitting at up. our table. Gideon up. Squawk and sees straight off the bat here for Kyle, throwing away that initial hand there. A couple of cards into the discard pile. Fresh new six cards uh, on Kyle's initial turn. We already have an origin form Palkia V on the bench as well with a Duskull and active. Unfortunately, one of those cards was the pink card. A-spec prime Ooh. catcher hitting the discard pile early. It's not, uh, it's not exactly where you want to see that. Getting some use out of that, especially when you're trying to target down some of those resources. There's some situations in this matchup. Maybe you can target down that Archaeops, put some pressure on that with the Dusk Noor, and then co combo that with a knockout, and leave your opponent completely stranded, depleted of energies. Yeah, you never want to see it go, but sometimes you just have to stabilize here, and that is for sure what Kyle is doing. Uh, but yeah, very key card to be in the discard pile so early in the game. We'll have to see if that affects things later down the line for Kyle. But this is the initial deck search, so we're going to be uh, mapping out all the key cards here, seeing what's in the prize cards on Kyle's side of things. Let's talk about this matchup just in general. Um, Kyle, other Kyle here on the desk. <laughs> How do you think this goes as far as on paper for these players? Yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly a slight advantage towards Kieran in a matchup like this. You have an opportunity to get very aggressive, make use of some high hit points on Lugia, but also incorporate that Iron Hands and maybe take advantage of some weakness or lower hit points that you see on this side. We see the Squawk ability. We see the Radiant Greninja. These are all free two or three prize card Pokemon for Kieran to take down the road. Unfortunately for him, it's in the prize cards this time around, so maybe it's an even playing field. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it is at the bottom of the prize cards, so Kieran hopefully has access to it earlier within the game, but like you said, I mean, that could be initially your game plan, but if it's not there, then you have to re-strategize straight off the bat here, but capturing Aroma being played here, it's going to hit a Tails yeah. this time around, so that's a basic. Typically, not what you're looking for on that opening flip. <laughs> you need to get those Archaeops in the discard pile. We see a couple pieces in the hand. I believe Squawkabilly was in the hand as well. So if uh, if ever for Kieran needs to uh, press the button, he could uh, discard this entire hand and go for it. But when you don't throw away the, the Pokemon that you need, like those uh, evolutions, you're, uh, you, you might just go for the research instead. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that is what we see in this Lugia deck, for sure, just discarding a lot of cards, getting fresh hands away. Of course, you do want to discard those Archaeops as soon as possible. That's one of your main objectives in the earlier part of this game, so you can start to accelerate your energy out, and then the functioning of this deck really comes out to shine. Especially since Kieran, uh, I think, already had a Lugia in the hand here, so just getting two Lugia V out on the bench here early on, and then also eyeing up the other cards, is going to see that Iron Hands is in the prize cards, I'm sure. Ultra Ball throwing away a V-Star, as well as that Squawk Ability to get that Archaeops, placing the, the value of that Archaeops uh, furthermore than the Squawk Ability, but like you said, the research is there too, so. Right, at this You don't point, have to do a two-prizer. Let's, let's make sure we condense the bench to a point that we're comfortable with. Two Lugia makes a lot of sense. You're playing against Palkia. I mean, for goodness sake, you, you know this Pokemon is capable of crazy things if you played two, three years ago. You can, it can take knockouts left and right. So yeah. make sure you have that backup Pokemon. And at this point, Kieran's really just looking for a single Archaeops, and it's going to be comfortable with reading the wind. Wow, there you go. Yep, keeping the bench as light as possible. And uh, it's going to be a capturing aroma first uh, from this fresh hand off the professor's research. It is going to hit a heads this time, so that's an evolution Pokemon now here for Kieran in that second Archaeops. Yep, now the question is, well, do you need to play this capturing aroma, the second one that's in the hand there? Or uh, do you want to leave some opportunities to search for whatever it may be, additional Lugia V-Star, or uh, uh, knowing that the other Mancino is in the prize cards, though, I think you're just comfortable. Read the wind, have a nice full hand, and see what your opponent comes up with. Yep, that's true. That might be what we see here. I mean, this is still the initial uh, turns of the game, so that's looking like what's going to happen here coming up for Kieran. Still eyeing up the rest of the cards here, but, oh, nope, we're done. It's now on to the Irda here from Kyle. I love seeing the Irda. I mean, I feel like we... 
we haven't seen these cards in kind of a while yeah. here, Kyle. So now, <laughs> brand new format, Stellar Crown is active. We're seeing uh, this this newly renowned deck in the origin form, Palkia, that brings us the water Pokemon and the water type cards that assist this deck. Uh, within that Irida. So searching out a water type Pokemon as well as an item card. It's a fantastic addition into this deck and just works very well with it. So we're going to see those choices here within that Earthen Vessel as well as that Origin Form Palkia V Star. Yeah, Kyle trying to work around with this hand is in a bit of an awkward spot with the Ultra Ball, but with the Earthen Vessel search, this works out fantastically. You now have the extra discards that you need, and these water energies are going to go right back into play with your uh, your V-Star ability for the game. Yeah. So and uh, you have to think that Kyle's in a pretty favorable spot right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that Star Portal V-Star ability is huge here, uh, re-accelerating a bunch of energy uh, from your discard pile. That's pretty Pretty awesome here for Kyle. We see the evolution into that V-Star. It's becoming a big boy now on the bench. And then we're going to see these energies into the discard here. Radiant Greninja flawlessly fitting into that strategy, getting that uh, water energy into the discard pile. Two additional cards to the hand as well for Kyle to be able to deal with in that Nest Ball as well as a Rotom V to the hand. Might become just some fodder here yeah. to an Ultra Ball. The, the one time you want to draw bad cards. Right. This, this is when you're about to <laughs> discard with Ultra Ball. The rest of his exactly. hand is Night Stretcher, Rare Candy, Energy, and uh, he's in the Nest Ball. He's got great resources to use, and uh, Rotom doesn't really fit that strategy anymore. So nope. <laughs> <laughs> throw that young lad away, and what can you come up with on this turn? Is it is it in the range of Moonlight Shurikens? It doesn't really line up that well with the Lugia, so mm -hmm. probably just getting aggressive with the Palkia and starting to fill this bench up again. Yeah, this is what we need to see from this Palkia. This is a well-known Pokemon from the past here in that Palkia V-Star. But as we see, the subspace swell does additional damage for the Pokemon on the benches. Um, so that's pretty big here for Kyle, lining up these Pokemon here, throwing away some cards, getting them out, thinning the deck even more as well. So well, all the strategies kind of go into plan here for Kyle. I was wondering if this Night Stretcher was going to go for the Mew. It lines up Ooh. a little too well. It's not exactly your favorite Pokemon in this matchup to incorporate, but it's, it seems like a pretty solid strategy to just play your hand down to nothing and draw three cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. I mean, if we don't have a hand, then we need some more cards to the hand, and Mew EX fits perfectly uh, for that. The restart ability, it's fresh hand of three now from there. The Night Stretcher was able to pull that card out of the discard pile as the Pokemon option from there. And then the evolution into the Dusknoor, thanks to that rare candy, jumping straight from a basic into a stage two. And then it's gone because we have that cursed blast ability. Knocked itself out here. 13 damage counters going on the other side of the field, thanks to that cursed blast. And now you're seeing oh, how the synergy the turn. of this, Good. yeah, yeah. This, uh, this deck works for Kyle. The synergy here within that Dust Noir getting damage out, and then you clean things up uh, on the back end. This time around, it's going to be uh, the Radiant Greninja getting all of these energy attached to it from the discard pile with that V-Star power here. And there you go, Kyle. Yeah. That's how it goes. Radiant Greninja going to be the one cleaning up on the back end, taking out that Lugia V here, and then spreading the rest of the damage as well. And that's Three prize cards for Kyle on this turn. Very early still in the game, and I'm sure Kieran's very happy to have two Lugia V out on that previous turn. That, that lined up very well. It, it, Minchino's not exactly your, your favorite target in the matchup. He's not a, 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 a large threat, but to take the additional prize card at this point, and look at the pressure that's on Kieran. <laughs> yep. He's trying to figure out what in the world do I even go after at this point. I, I don't have my iron hands to catch back up in prize cards. Uh, knocking out this Radiant Greninja does nothing for me because my opponent can't uh, charge it up again next turn. So I want to attack into a Pokemon like Palkia, or I need to go after some of these two prize Pokemon on the, on the back end. Exactly. I know the pressure's real, definitely, for Kieran here. We saw Kieran do everything possible in the last turn to get these Archaeops in the discard pile. Now we have the option to evolve because we had only one turn. So now we're on our second turn here. We have a Lugia V-Star out, those two Archaeops down, keeping the, the bench again 
light uh, for Kieran to be able to not add any damage over to Kyle's side. And now it's just a Lugia V-Star and some energy that are going to have to be attached to it to power up that Tempest dive to start getting things going on Kieran's side. But what are ways that Kieran can kind of turn the table in this matchup, sort of being on the back foot now? Because Kyle only has three prize cards left to take. Right. For Kieran, it's all about controlling his board size and picking very specific turns to get aggressive. So at this stage, you're fully committed to your Lugia V-Star as your attacker. If you keep, can keep the board to just the Archaeops, you'll feel pretty comfortable. But it's finding the actual raw copy of boss's orders that makes you feel good. It's not the, the, the Luminion into that card because then you're allowing your opponent to just have an easy two prize cards. You need to make them work for every prize at this point. Yes, every prize indeed. Kyle, we're going to see a bunch of energy coming out here on the field from Kieran. Thanks to these Archaeops. What a lovely little feature there. V-Star Power pops out your Archaeops and then they throw energies all around here. That's the bread and butter, the Lugia V-Star deck. It has been so prominent for us and Kieran Farah has definitely been one of the, uh, the strong piloters here of the Lugia V-Star yeah. deck for sure. Although I will say, Kyle, Kieran said that uh, he wears a ring, a Chen Pao ring for good luck as well. So how cute is that? Okay, yeah, he's gotta gotta pay Back homage to the, to, to the homeboys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But there were there were definitely two strategies at this point for for Kieran. You could either full send. You could mm -hmm. play Luminion, boss's orders, bring up Mew, take a knockout, two prize cards, hope to see Iron Hands, and then go boss Squawkabilly, three prize cards, win the game because your opponent gave you one with the Dustnor. Instead, goes for this slower approach, but I don't hate it because your opponent doesn't have easy access to a two-prize knockout right now, so you're kind of at a level playing field. Yeah, Kieran taking out that Radiant Greninja, the Gift Energy and the Iron Hands EX, or the selected cards from the prize cards as well. So now taking that slower pace here, we'll have to see if it pays off for Kieran. Kyle on the other side starting things out with that Nest Ball, bringing a Dust Skull onto the bench here for Kyle. So getting another Dusk Nor up and ready for these uh, next turns coming up. Pokestop is going to be the stadium in play now for us. Into an Iono as well. So that was a pretty stacked hand here for Kieran. Lots of cards there that are all going to be going to the bottom of the deck as well as Kyle's hand here. And then we're going to be oh. drawing into some fresh cards. Only three for Kyle, four for Kieran. A lot of fish, a lot of Ultra Ball for Kieran. So all the ways to search out that boss's orders is nice. not going to be found. And for Kyle, that was multiple rare candy, a Dusknor, a Greninja. Uh, all, the, all the evolutions that you'd like to see were there, but none of the basic Pokemon. So these additions, this Night Stretcher into Pheasantipity, uh, allowing you to extend your board a little further, put more damage on with Palkia. Every 20 damage counts at this point, so fill that board as best you can. Yep, Pheasantipity EX coming out, buffing up the damage from uh, Palkia, also allowing for some flip the script action for Kyle. We're going to restart first here from that Mew EX. So is that the shoe? Uh, the shoe. There There's it is. One copy of Tracking Shoes in the list here for Kyle Lesnowitz. And that's it. So hopefully we have some utility here from Kyle. It's an Ultra Ball, and there's debate here on whether or not to keep it. Throwing it in the discard pile, taking the next card up, which was the Earthen Vessel. Hobbled his way into an Earthen Vessel. Yeah, we'll right? take it. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a good resource Those at this point. You need the energy to attack. Some walking shoes, <laughs> if I'd ever say so, He's Kyle. Pogo sticking his way over there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, we got there. The Earthen Vessel now discarding that secondary Pokestop here for Kyle to search out these water energy. That is one thing. Uh, all those water energy went to that Radiant Greninja in the initial turn. Uh, it used its move. It has to throw it back away. And uh, now Kyle's having to search out these other energies to be able to accelerate them to the field here uh, onto that Origin Form Palkia V-Star that only has a single water energy so far. So we're setting up uh, here for Kyle. Nice and slow and just trying to steadily close out the rest of this game. We still have that flip the script because a knockout happened in the previous turn as well. We see that Greninja EX, a Nest Ball, an additional Earthen Vessel. So lots Nest of resources. Ball. Yeah, just an additional Pokemon at this point is so valuable. 
and we'll, we'll get a little more of a feel for what Kyle wants to do to close out in a game like this. As you mentioned, the, all the energies used on that Radiant Greninja mean that you've already used your V-Star ability. You don't have man, many other attacks that you can use for one energy or less. And you see Kyle, he's mulling it over. Is Greninja EX really going to be my best attacker here? Do I, do I put all my eggs in the Blood Moon basket and go that strategy? Because after you attach this water to the Palkia, you only have access to zero or one cost attacks. Mm -hmm. And that can be tricky here. I love to see it, at least. The little frog coming out. I mean, Greninja EX, it was so hyped when we initially saw this card, but we haven't seen much of it on our stages. So I'd be excited to see that in action here uh, in the form of the Palkia V-Star deck as a, a partner Pokemon. But right now, it's going to be this origin form, Palkia V-Star, subspace swell. Like we said, it's 60 base damage, 20 damage for each bench Pokemon. But it's not just your bench, it's your opponent's as well. That's why we've been seeing Kieran Farah keep his bench nice and light to not add that damage on from Kyle. And so we're seeing a big hit into that Lugia V-Star. It's heavily damaged now, only 110 HP left to go. And it looks like he's really mulling over this next upcoming turn. Yeah, Kyle taking into consideration the V-Guard energy that's attached to this Pokemon. Just the damage reduction, but it doesn't come into play when you think about that Rare Candy Dust North. 13 damage counter, still takes the knockout on this Pokemon. And ooh, for Kieran, that's mm -hmm. just losing three cards, one of which is a boss's orders. Not what you're looking to see. That Iono was pretty good for Kyle. Yes, and I think we saw it. Kiri looked at the hands like, oh, these are all the cards I'm losing right now, going to the bottom, only drawing into four cards. And now it's looking to, unfortunately, put Kieran in a bit of a pickle. The Pokestop was rolled. It's very uh, valuable resources were thrown away, unfortunately, on it. And Kieran just has the Weird Deer V coming down onto the bench and is now going to power things up here with that Archaeops, but is definitely not looking like it's as smooth as we'd want it to go here for Kieran Farah. Yeah, a lot of energy in the hand, a Lugia V-Star, not much to work with. You just can't do anything other than a throw down cards with Primal Turbo and Giddy Up. And it's, it's a lot of energies in play. Should be close to that knockout range, but you're, all your eggs are in this basket now, buddy. You got to figure it out from here and <laughs> you're susceptible. Yeah, susceptible indeed. Weird Air V is going to come into the active position here. Its ability, Frontier Road, allows all of these energies to be shifted on to it. And then it's doing 40 damage for each energy attached here. This is how you see this, uh, this Pokemon take huge knockouts in these games and take down these giant Pokemon it faces off against. I mean, that Origin Form Palkia V-Star is 280 HP there, so it's going to need quite a bit here from Kieran to be able to get there. Sometimes the energy placement is a work of art. I don't know what uh, to call this. I don't, look at that. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we still have uh, another Archeops to work with for this Primal Turbo. Each of them, they, they stack up their resources here. One ability was used, and now another could be used to take out uh, two other um, energy outs. One's going to go on to that Archeops as a follow-up attacker. Archeops has been swinging in many matchups as well for the Lugia deck, so Miss Energy going to go on to there. And just protecting it, too. That's going to be the swing here. That big, giant, 280 HP origin form Palkia V-Star going down here. Two prize cards for Kieran, bringing it down to two left to take to take home this game. And Kyle now three left to take here. Had everything lined up. We had the Dusk Gold last turn that uh, could now be evolved if we have the resources there into the Dusk Nord to get some extra damage out. Plenty of ways to draw into cards with the restart, with the flip the script, and Kyle just has to get there. Remember, I think this we're still working off that Iona hand from before for Kyle. That was a limited card, so I'm, I'm interested to see what we're working with here, Kyle. Well, there's plenty of draw. You have the Pokestop, you have the Mew restart, yeah. you have the Fezendipity to flip the script as well, and Kyle takes the rare candy Greninja out of, this, out of the, uh, the, the solution now at this point, understands the, the rare candy is necessary for the Dusknoir and doesn't want to go for the double at this point. It's, it's tricky, though, because you have Knockout on the Weird Ear with the fighting weakness of the Greninja into this Pokemon. That's one of your prizes. Rare candy Dusknoir is your other two prizes on the Lukia to close out the match. So he's going to play down his resources and see where he gets, but it's getting tough. 
Well, Blood Moon Ursa Luna here being benched. That's a key card here for Kyle as well. We're going to start to see what cards are oh, being... Oh, it's well, Rare Candy that. Dustor! Rare Candy Dustor as the two cards off the restart from the Mew EX. Those are the exact two cards needed to get into this evolution, into the Dusknor. That's going to be the knockout there on that Lugia V-Star. Cleaning it up off the bench. That's two prize oh. cards there for Kyle. And then we have no that way. knockout to bring home this game from a Mew EX restart. Kyle Lesnowitz is the winner here in our first game. <laughs> he can't believe it. He's like, no shot did I just pull that off. I didn't even have to oh, flip the incredible. script. It's just there. And well done. What a what a great understanding of his resources available. And he just set himself up for a... Uh, a good old math equation that locks in a <laughs> uh, quick, uh, quick game one. Exactly. We got there for Kyle Lesnowitz here. So unfortunate to see from Kieran who put up a good fight. But this this brand new uh, deck in this format uh, is back on the scene and it is swinging here. And Kyle is showcasing that so well facing off against that Lugia V-Star. Let's take a quick look, Kyle, at the recap here, because you're Kyle. Took I it am. home. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll role <laughs> play as Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> Boom! Three prizes. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's just so nice to open up with that Moonlight Shuriken and the Rare Candy Dust Noir. 220 into the Lugia, cleaning up the Mancino, and those prize cards prove vital at this stage. Off of the Iono, Kieran did not find much. Had to full send on the Weird Deer V, and it's not where you want to be. It's a susceptible Pokemon, lower hit points. You're not stealing additional prizes. Boom, rare candy with the Dusk Nor. Doesn't get much sweeter than that. Give your opponent a prize, Ooh. but you're taking three yourself. It's going to be Blood Moon Ursula Luna taking the knockout here on poor old Christmas. Yeah, Blood Moon Ursa Luna. It is such a cool card. Free attacks once you're into the late game because that, uh, that move that it has is dwindled down over time. So it's such a cool card. It's kind of sad because we only see it in the end game. So we see it for like two seconds, then it's gone. Yeah. But uh, it definitely cleans up pretty darn well. Um, so in this match, Kieran's going to be going first this time around. Losing the first game here, to opting to go first now into this game two. We're going to have to see a lot of pressure be put on early on because as you saw in that last game, Kyle was able to capitalize on those early prize cards and that really turned the tides for Kieran from the get-go. Well, having to limit your bench. Oh no! Yep, this What's is, happening? This, this is terrifying for Kieran. What? Not only does he have the iron hands in hand and says, alright, we oh, can turn no. this around. No pink card! There's no way to attack with this Pokemon this time around. No. He cannot believe the hand that's been dealt to him. Oh, I mean, not only that, but look at the rest of the prize cards. They're all very bad, yeah, too. Yeah, any way to search out a bird and any way exactly. to close out on some of these lower hit point two prize Pokemon, boss's orders, just gone. That is yeah. devastating news for Kieran. Has to just go for a, a streamlined play. You play mm -hmm. the Squawk ability, throw cards in the discard pile, attack with Lugia V-Star, and hopefully see the legacy energy soon, but exactly. it's not coming up soon. It is not coming up soon indeed. Kyle, on the other hand, with the prize cards, there is a pair of the V and the V stars. So we have one each in the deck left for Kyle, but we saw there's other attackers too. I mean, not only do you still have your one origin form Palkia V star down the line. So, I mean, that's definitely not as detrimental as Kieran's prize cards. One of those rare candy prize as well, but Kyle definitely has a better uh, better odds here with the prize cards, at least. Yeah, I would say with the two that. origin form Palkia V, there is an opportunity for the Lugia V star to boss's mm -hmm. orders for regular energy. As long as no double turbos are incorporated into that, you could boss's orders, take a knockout there, and then limit your opportunities for your opponent to, to use that V star ability, use Moonlight Shuriken, and really start to disrupt the board. So going first in this matchup, still a great uh, help, but mm -hmm. this hand is not going to help you at all. Ugh, yeah, we just had the Lugia V. It's got a gift energy now attached to it for the turn. Squawkabilly is down on the yep. initial turn, and that's that's it. All of these cards that were in the hand are going to be thrown away now on that Squawk and Seize here from Kieran. So that Iron Hands, that Weird Ear V there in the discard pile now for Kieran, and we're working with a fresh hand, just trying to stabilize this board right now. And we already have that Minchino on the board, too, with that Squawkabilly. So that's already two Pokemon. Uh, for for the board for Kieran and we're gonna have to have those Archeops in the future as well So it's gonna be a, a, a wider board from Kieran this time around This is my favorite part for Kieran as he looks at a hand which is 
incredible and, then and has to just sell it bad. to his opponent that's yes. utter trash. Well, man, well, if you have Iono, you have Iono. Yeah. But he over there is thinking, please, God, don't have Iono. Exactly. I've got Ultra Ball. I've got Professor's Research. I can easily get double Archeops set up with this hand now. And uh, I think the supporter for Kyle is Iono, regardless no! of what he wants. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, Kieran, that is one of the traits that he has that he does well. There's some mind games here when you're playing Pokemon TCG that you can definitely enact. It is fully in your capability to do so. And Kieran definitely, I he, he always stuff. looks miserable yes. when he's playing. And I, I love it. It's, it's great. But yeah, over on the other side, sometimes you can't stop what is going to happen to you next. And if that is the supporter here for Kyle, that would be rough to see because Kieran has a fantastic hand coming up here. We'll see what happens in this first initial turn from Kyle. Surging through the deck off this nest ball is going to grab that Radiant Greninja. We saw what utility this Greninja had in the last match to throw away those energy into the discard pile, start lining up options for your attackers later in this game here. So let's let's take a look what else we got in the hand from Kyle. If he's going to be able to utilize some more cards before any supporters or not. Yeah, there was double nest ball. Ooh, and, uh, looks like Pokemon. he found some purple friends, which is yeah. always nice to see. Rare candy in the hand, too. So actually just has the whole line ready to uh, go. Could just hold it. But he does have information now. He knows that it is the Palkia. So mm. <laughs> place it down. Hopefully it sticks around. And uh, currently your opponent does not have an answer that I saw, but Ultra Ball with some help would be able to get there. Yeah, there's got to be in mind games on the other side too. Can't give away that this is your, your single, singular Palkia that you have, but it's got to come out. Uh, onto the field and hopefully get its full utility uh, for Kyle here in this match. Hopefully it doesn't get too spicy down the line. The Dusk Gold that was drawn off that Radiant Greninja concealed cards ability as well coming out. That's fantastic to see. I mean, it, it is a pretty, I mean, we have some valuable cards in the hand. We just have to wait a little bit because this is the initial turn for Kyle. So we can't, we can't evolve just yet. And it's actually going to be that Iono here being used from Kyle. So all of those cards for Kieran going back to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, I respect it. The hand was Love rare it. candy in Duck Snore, and you're about to give your opponent prize cards. They're probably taking prize cards, and then you'd have them walk right into an Iono. He says, no, I just need more Pokemon on my bench, honestly. I'm just, and look you, at that. What is, what is it's this? the shoe. There's Dust Snore rare candy again. Into Dust Snore candy That's again. That's what I'm saying. It was Rotom the shoe. If you want to just draw up. The like, singular pair of shoes. It's a one of copy, and it has been the most influential card here so far in both of these games. That's pretty wild. Well, we have the pivot here from this Fezendipity EX. Have the energy attached already onto it for, for Kyle. Yeah, I think this is just Radiant Greninja. Give a single prize to your opponents. Uh, accept the fact that Moonlight Shuriken probably isn't on the board for you. And if it is, it means your opponent already had Ooh. the boss for the Palkia. And you were going to be uh, paddling anyways. Exactly, and now this is where the Rotom V comes into play. We saw it thrown away to an Ultra Ball in the last game. Now it's serving its utility here in that instant charge, drawing three additional uh, cards for the upcoming turns for Kyle. And of course, also buffing that damage for the Palkia coming up in this matchup too. So This definitely. is a big flip here. Mezzagoza is heads. heads here. That is great. Kieran could be able to search out a Pokemon here off that Mezzagoza. It was that was huge. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple pieces that were needed to be found here. The Ultra Ball is in hand. The Archeops is already there. So if you find the Lugia with this one, then the Ultra Ball finds the Luminion. That means boss's orders and goodbye Palkia V. Oh my goodness, we could get there even despite all the prize cards working against Kieran. That is what we're gonna be seeing here, Ultra Ball. Here, grabbing that Luminian, you see that boss's orders being established nice and early here for Kieran, realizing this is the threat on the board. Palkia V needs to be taken down here from the Slugia V Star, and all the pieces came together. We saw the V Star power to bring out those Archeops. Now they're primal turboing all of these special energy out of the deck here from Kieran onto this V Star, and this is huge. This is what we've been dreading if we're talking about Kyle's side of the field because we're only working with that single Palkia V. So once it's gone, uh, I guess it'd have to be Night Shredgered, huh? It has to, <laughs> I mean, it, it had to be Froakie last turn in order to have any relevant attack mm -hmm. this turn when the Palkia V is gone. Night Stretcher can help you place down the Palkia once more, but 
the curse of Kieran is now the blessing. As the, the boss's orders that were in the prize cards, he's going to draw into another boss. And then he takes two prizes. And he draws into another boss. And then he wins the game. So for Kieran, it couldn't line up any cleaner at this point. As he takes his prize cards, he takes more knockouts. He gains that power from the prize cards indeed. So it doesn't always shape up like that, but the pressure is on now. Kieran Farah taking the first knockout of the game on this origin form Palkia V. It's wiped off the field. Two prize cards down. Kyle re-promoting that Radiant Greninja now into the active position as we kick off this next turn here. But as you said, that is an attacker that is now eliminated here, and that is one aspect of this deck. There's a lot of evolving in here. All the support Pokemon are basics. They draw you cards, they're basics you throw down to get those cards, but the rest, besides the Radiant Greninja, have to be evolved into either with those rare candies or just hard evolutions, and that's where it can be a bit of a pickle here for Kyle. Right, I'm, you, you can give your opponent some additional prize card with, uh, with the Dusknoir, and you can pop and take the, the Chinchino if you want, but you're not accomplishing anything relevant. You're not getting anywhere closer to the Blood Moon being able to attack this turn. You're just, mm -hmm. nothing Nothing gets there at this stage. So you have to take this slower approach and you just can't really afford that when your opponent is staring you down with this Lugia and we know they've got a boss in hand. Exactly, ooh, that's so detrimental here. Not what you want to be seeing from Kyle, I'm sure. At least Kyle has picked up the first game. So if Kieran's able to, uh, solidify the second game. We'll be going to a game three, and that's pretty exciting here for these players. But look at the clock here, 20 minutes. So it is gonna have to be, if this game continues to go super slowly, it could be kind of awkward here. So Rare Candy's gonna kick us off into a Dusk Noir. That is our first evolution that we see. It's becoming big, but it's not gonna stay there very long for Kyle. Yeah, just, I don't know if it's enough resources to make much of a game out of it at this point. If he sees the boss's orders from Kieran, pretty much understands that this is an insurmountable point to come back from. But you have to keep trying. But as you also said, with the time, time. that we have left, there is a point where you have to just throw in the towel. And I think that's going to be around the 16-minute mark. Give yourself exactly enough time to close out. And mm -hmm. that might line up perfectly with when the boss is played. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Well, we're definitely going to have to see how these next turns go and if it's enough pressure that Kyle just scoot things up and goes to another turn here. But, oh, look at that. Wait, we have the Iona in hand? Yeah, it looks like that was found off of the Pheasantivity. Flip the script. Oh, so a we're little flipping it. more help which means that you could slow down your opponent from that one turn of having the boss's orders. They have to take a, a non-V or EX knockout on the Pokemon like that rating for Ninja. And you buy one more turn. But what are you really accomplishing other than, well, I played down some Pokemon this turn and I still need to get a couple rare exactly. candies in order to have a great turn. Yeah, you never really want to be buying turns as a Pokemon TCG player. You want to be ahead of the game. You want to be making sure that your uh, opponent's trying to buy turns, but you, you, buying turns only gets you so much. You still have to get to your win conditions. So if, if uh, that outweighs the, the stalling just for a little bit, you might have to still uh, re reassess your board state here. But Kyle's going for it. We're going to put this energy onto that little frog on the bench here. And uh, Froki, Froki's going to start getting charged up here from Kyle. Well, Luminion doesn't have an ability to use this turn, Kieran, but he throws down the coin on it. Now, this is just <laughs> loading up Pokemon and make sure that uh, you have access to some uh, some good knockouts. Looks like Luminion protected with the gift energy yeah. in case that Pokemon were to be targeted. You would have a nice fresh hand after an Iono. Pretty. And maybe uh, maybe you can throw some energy on Chinchino if you'd like just to thin out the deck a little bit. Yeah, that Lugia V-Star is super protected. Three mist energies on it. <laughs> Shrouded in the, in the clouds. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Flying through the clouds indeed. Gift energy also going down onto that Squawkabilly. We see this strategy here from Kieran. That's so cool. All these gift energy being thrown out onto the field, protecting uh, later on if they're knocked out. Fresh hand for Kieran. Look how slim the hand is right now. Yep. And But... It's slim, but the boss's orders is in the hand. As we were talking about, it's going to target down these two prize card Pokemon. Pheasantipity being wiped off the field. That's another two prize cards. And boss's orders is in the prize cards here, being taken once again for Kieran. So Kyle is going to really have to decide what to do here going from this turn. Kieran has worked himself in a dominant position so far in this match. Two prize cards left to take. Kyle can use all the Night Stretchers here, but... 
again, other Kyle, what are we accomplishing? You, you, rare Candy into Greninja, uh, play the Pheasantivity, use Iono. Dusnor can still you curse can, blast. You can use one Dusnor, it's the one in the active. <laughs> yes. And th that will that will line up for a knockout on the active Lugia V-Star. But the problem is you, uh, you played Iono and you're going to walk into a gift energy. Your opponent has a boss's orders and an open bench space, a Chinchino that can knock out anything, and Rotom and Pheasantivity are looking juicy at this point. I just don't think that this is a time where you can put the effort into this and uh, watch the clock melt away when you have a pretty good chance at a game three. Yeah, I was just thinking that going into a game three, especially if you get to choose whether you go first or second, that's pretty big here. So, we'll ha I mean, Kyle's sending it here. We have this Greninja EX. At least it's cool seeing the Greninja EX. Yeah. Hey, and on it's, the it's stage. It's a big boy, a lot of hit points. Mm -hmm. it, it, it searches out any card for you. but Yeah, it's nice. Ooh. <laughs> Now what? <laughs> <laughs> now what? Well, Rare Candy into this Greninja EX. The small little Froakie, 70 HP, and now a big Greninja EX. 310 HP on that buddy. As well as a secondary Dusnor uh, coming into both. play. Use Wait, them both and go to game three. We had two Rare Candies? No, it's a Dusclops. Oh, oh, the, oh yeah, the Dusclops. Dusnor was okay. out last turn. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That's good. Well, yeah, the, use them both. <laughs> <laughs> use them both in the game three. It's clearly my oh favorite my. play right here. <laughs> Just wipe up your own board. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is the, the counter catcher in hand, so you could go after mm. uh, what whichever Pokemon. I suppose oh. the Luminion, if you'd like, and uh, try to work on uh, that threat as well. But th there's the gift energies, man. Ooh, I'm, I'm shaking. Yeah, the gift energies. I mean, they're definitely going to pull some weight here, and that's why we saw them all come into play from Kieran. That was a, a heads-up strat there for sure to make sure that uh, the, the recovery is there. So Kyle's done everything. That Dusknoir has gone down. 13 damage counters, dropping prize cards on both players' fields here. And then uh, that Iono is going to be the choice here. So all those cards going back to the bottom of each other's, uh, not each other's, but their own decks and Kyle's going to have some fresh cards to work with. Greninja EX already charged up with two water energy in the active. We still have to flip the script. So that's going to be three additional cards to the hand here from Kyle. Yeah, this, I mean, you don't you don't pop the gift energy. Your opponent's left with one card. They will not have the resource to win the game next turn, most likely, and under, under this situation. But you have to attack at some point. You don't have an additional prize card to give your opponent by way of that Dusk Glops or Dusk Nor. So incorporating some win condition with uh, with the Greninja EX, maybe trying to work in a Mirage, uh, Mirage Barrage. Mirage Barrage, it, yep. It's just, it doesn't it doesn't culminate into a, a win condition. It probably leads into Gift Energy is going to pop at some point. Is that a Mesa Goza for a fish? Do we have chances here? Yeah, this is what we're working with off the Iono. So Kieran had one card draw off of that Iono. Then, of course, the draw for turn as well. Uh, Kyle here still working through. Yeah, he's taking the card off his Shinobi Blade, but... Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So Shinobi Blade does get you any card. It's actually a really cool move, and that's why this card was so hyped when we uh, initially saw it. Shinobi Blade, 170 damage, and then you search out any card. But Kieran already took the card for... Uh, off the top for turn. That's why we had two cards. All of these primal turbo special energies being lined up onto this Luminion. He's, he's just trying to avoid knocking out, but Mizagoza for a Luminion would get there, and that's it's a, a heads. heads. That is a heads. That's any Pokemon here from the deck. We see that fish lining up a boss's orders. That's going to line up a win here for Kieran Farah, taking it down in this game two between our players. That means we're going to a game three, Kyle, and there's like 12 minutes I on the clock. I think he just did Kyle a favor. Obviously, you have to win the game to get to game three, but for Kyle to ever get three match points out of it, the game had to end. It was like quicker, yeah. Right then and there, if not three minutes ago. So I like this. This gives us an opportunity for both players with nine minutes to maybe get a good game three out of it. Let's see what went down in game number two. Yeah, that was quite the game here between our players. We've gone back and forth here. Kieran was able to stabilize nice and quick in this initial game. We saw that knockout 
early on on that origin form, Palkia V. It was the only one here that Kyle had to work with. That Radiant Greninja was being promoted as sort of a protection, but Boss's orders worked around that nice and easy, bringing up those two prize card Pokemon consistently from Kyle's side, knocking them out. Kyle was taking out prize cards from Kieran's side with his own Dusknoir, and it was just too much pressure. Uh, on Kyle's side, could not respond, taking that many prize cards uh, in the end game here. And Kieran had everything to uh, to continue to boss up other Pokemon, thanks to those fish sticks that we see so often, getting out those bosses orders for you to line up those clutch winning plays. And Kieran got there to the win in our game two. Well, this is where the magic happens. 10 minutes remaining, both players really craving three match points at this stage of the You want to win. Got to win at this point. If you, you want to get yeah. to that 31 threshold, that's probably going to help you into the asymmetric cut at this point. And we've got very limited time. This is a perfect situation, though. I think this matchup looks the cleanest when both players have access to Legacy plus Iron Hands, double Palkia, and Kyle going first. That leads to mm -hmm. the fairest of matches and I'm really excited to see what could happen here if the prize cards don't shoot us in the foot. Well, we'll have to see what those prize cards are, but we're starting off this match. First of all, game three here in our Swiss rounds, and we're starting off nice and strong. I'm excited to see. Oh, wait. oh we can see him right here, Kyle. Yep, we've, we've got the news. We've got the news. <laughs> we've got the news. We'll wait till you all can have the news. Ultra Ball starting off here for Kyle on uh, this side of the field, discarding that as in Dippity, as well as a Dusknoir early on. So let's look at these prize cards. Radiant Greninja here being one of them. That's a key one that we have uh, in there because we've seen that Radiant Greninja is used for the concealed cards, not only to draw you more cards, but to get those energy in the discard pile as well. Those are two key aspects for your earlier game uh, to line things up. And Kyle is not going to have access to that. Yeah, thankfully still plays that one copy of the Squawkabilly to help out in situations like this. It's not necessarily the, the cards that you draw along the way. It's the, uh, <laughs> the water energies you discard to get there. Yes. And with two of those in the hand, discarding those early and probably drawing into another one. Beautiful. We might see him hedge. Who knows? But I like <laughs> I like throwing away the energies and getting it up. Yes, yeah. Squawkabilly's gonna do that nice and easy here. Radiant Greninja isn't gonna serve us in that way, shape, and form. But Squawkabilly, you can use it on your first turn here, and that's gonna get you just far enough. Is a liability on the bench, though, of course, being a two prize card Pokemon there for Kyle. But we have to set up this initial turn. That's what we're going to do. Throw those cards away. Rare Candy being one of them going into the discard pile. Shoot. Kyle's going to do the shoes. <laughs> what is it? It's oh, it's a best ball. What? That's pretty good. <laughs> this is the most broken pair of shoes He's, in the best way possible. His, his deckless comment is only unfair cards. And I guess it's you can only, it's, it's if you play trekking shoes singularly yeah, that it becomes broken. One copy of trekking shoes is the way here from Kyle Lesnowitz. Nest Ball, huge card here to be able to line up these Pokemon. Not only buffing the damage, but we've been talking about evolutions. There's so many evolving Pokemon here in, within the attackers for Kyle. So getting out this Duskull is huge uh, for Kyle to get down on this turn from that shoes. So Squawkabilly uh, worked us into a new hand here. So we're working with some additional cards for the future, but it's just going to be a pass now over to Kieran. Starting off with the Mesa Goza. It's a heads. That's a one way to start if you're Kieran Fair to kick this off. Weird Air V is a bit awkward here as the starting Pokemon, but we can work around it to hopefully for Kieran. Uh, going to be able to search out that Archaeops from the Evolution Pokemon off the, off the uh, Mesa Goza. So heads, so that's, that's what we're working with here. But did you get a look at the starting hand, Kyle? Yeah, um, he's got his pink card, but that is not where you want to see it at this point. You have Professor's Research, so losing the Legacy Energy early would be pretty unfortunate. It might make you have to go a different route and play this energy onto a Pokemon you don't necessarily see in the early game. A Luminion that could shuffle it back in or uh, playing sure. the Iron Hands itself and just putting it down. So it's, well, I've got this established. Or you just forego it all together, which seems unfortunate when you have such an opportunity at, at, the, at, the, at your hands here with six minutes remaining and Squawkabilly sitting there on the bench. Got options. You've got options, but just can't get there, unfortunately. Just going to be able to put this Lugia V out, stabilize the board a little bit here from Kieran, but working off the bat foot, I mean, 
seven minutes, less than seven minutes now on the clock, almost less than six minutes for our players. Legacy Energy is going to be attached dear. there to, yeah, Super Dear, Weird Air V, of course, because all those other cards are hitting the discard pile. Thanks to that professor's research, fresh seven cards to the hand at least. Got a lot of energy in there. I would not say those were fresh. Yeah, those That's were those were uh, old, triple, stale. Triple, double, turbo. Oh, no. That is <laughs> That's a very, very bad. ugly hand to see. <laughs> that is very bad indeed. So you need the energy in your deck to be able to use the Archaeops Primal to route all those energy. You don't want them in your hands to be able to attach from turn. You want to accelerate them from the deck and then have cards you can actually use in your hand. But Ultra Ball is at least going to utilize two of those energies, throwing them in the discard pile just to protect here now for Kieran, bringing out another Lugia V to stabilize even more. It's just two Lugia V, a weird ear with a legacy energy, and that's all we're working with right now. Boo, have you ever been at this point in the tournament where you know that the ID or the, 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 the tie here is okay, yeah. but you need the win, and you look at your hand and it's that bad, <laughs> you're like, all right, I guess I'm gonna take a little more time to look at the deck list here <laughs> this time around. Yeah. That's where Kieran's at. This, this hand doesn't go anywhere. He needs some help. Kyle needs to uh, put his foot on the gas and go. Look at that. Well, one way to do it's Mesa Goza hitting a heads. I mean, this is Kieran's uh, stadium, but it serves both players here. And Kyle's going to be able to utilize that, get any Pokemon out. So we're talking about those evolutions. This is one fantastic way to search them in that origin form. Palkia V-Star coming out to play here. We also have one energy that was attached manually on the last turn here for Kyle and uh, plenty in the discard from that Squawkabilly, so we're chilling. Starting to juice up at this point, and the hand is still not the greatest. It's kind of clogged. You see those energies. That's why uh, earlier I wanted to just discard them all. You're not going to get the benefit of Radiant Greninja in a spot like this because mm -hmm. it's, it's in your prize card. Gone. So <laughs> if you use your V-Star ability, you're going to have enough water energies to attack. But if you draw into a bunch of them, you don't get to play them down. Mm, and yeah. see him throws away one with Lost Vacuum at this point. Just yeah, look at that. I don't want to see this card again. <laughs> yeah, get it out of my hands at this point. Both of those cards going into the Lost Zone. Thanks to that Lost Vacuum, the stadium's gone. And energy on Kyle's side is gone. We see all of these Pokemon now hitting the bench. Kyle has played down this hand completely thanks to that Lost Vacuum helping out quite a bit, as well as the energy attachment for turn. Restart's going to get us a fresh three cards here. I see an Ultra Ball. I see a couple of Pokemon in that Rotom V uh, in the hand. What's the other one? Is that Blood? Oh, no. Blood Moon Arch is on bench. I can't tell. I can't tell. Well, but either way, we're we're knocked, or we're hitting here with that Origin Form Palkia V-Star almost to knock on that Weird Ear V that's only 220 HP to start with, but is going to hang on there, get a Turbo Energy attached to it from Kieran's hand. V-Star's in play now, so we have the Summoning Star ability, but um, do we even have two Archaeops in the, in the discard? I I don't think I, we do. I, th I think there's one yeah. off the off the Ultra Ball, but after that, it was there wasn't much else. And yes, so a little more help is needed. But look at the it, cheeky play on Kyle's end, as yeah. he does not go straight for the knockout with the Palkia and the Dust and Dust Flops. He holds on to it to try to play around the Legacy Energy, get that additional prize card back. Yeah, that's beautiful, actually. If you can play around that legacy energy that's hindering you taking an additional prize card, protecting that Pokemon, the Super Deer can no longer do that if you're talking about damage counters working through that. So that's pretty cool here to see from Kyle, for sure. The Weird Deer hanging on for its dear life. <laughs> but it's really not going to help very much for Garrett. Not actually what he wanted to see there. Lugia V-Star, like I said, is down. What's the hand that we're working with here? Fish sticks. Oh, just, just, two, just a bunch two, of fish Two Luminion and nothing to go with. Doesn't want to go <laughs> oh, for the no. single chop, yeah, I believe. So you can't. You, you just can't. slow down and <laughs> bash them. Make em. it easy. You bash them, yes, exactly. Psy, shield, bash. There right, there's two that. minutes remaining. I know you want to make the cleanest plays, Kyle, but you have to move <laughs> quick at this point. If you can get your opponent down to yourself down to two prize cards remaining before time expires. That's a really good spot. But. Well, here we go. It's not just the Dust Nor that can throw itself into this, the discard pile. We also have that Dust Glops. It's a little lighter, but it's just enough damage here to take out that Weird Ear V, work around that legacy energy as well from Kyle. 
And uh, yeah, now we're taking prize cards here, technically on both sides, since that dust lops is going down, but that's where Kyle wants to be taking the lead in the prize cards. Now, Origin Form Palkia V-Star has a couple of damage counters from the side field, side shield bash from the Weird Air V, but it's still cracking here, and we're seeing another dust goal come down, putting on more pressure from Kyle's side. And this is, again, another spot where you're going to attack in for relevant damage for later on in the game. You can attack in that Lugia and, and perhaps soften it up to a point where the Dusk Nor can take a knockout. But you need to end your turn before there's a minute, uh, yeah. before, what, 15 seconds? Exactly. You need Kieran to draw his card, and you need two turns Go in quick. order to make this work. We saw this yesterday. I think it was in the cloth match. Was it the cloth yeah, it was, match? Yeah, it was cloth ogie dogie. Yeah. That <laughs> the, 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 late, the late turn yes. uh, Iono ended up being the, the issue. And yeah. Gave, I know. Uh, gave Jim O'Brien some help. Exactly. I mean, these player these players are aware of the time. I'm sure our judges are are keeping them up on that time. But we've got 30 seconds here, and Kyle is still shuffling up here. After the time is called, you have three additional turns, and whoever's turn it is on that time call is turn zero. So you're talking about giving up in a, a turn essentially if you cannot end in time. Rare Candy gonna. Uh, Evolve this Greninja EX now on the bench here. 13 seconds left on the clock. Night Stretcher being used now to take out another uh, uh, either Pokemon or energy. It's going to be that energy to charge up that Greninja EX. And now oh, yeah, the no opportunity way. to retreat to this Pokemon is available. You could attack in, use the Shinobi Blade, and find some cool resources. <sighs> You're doing similar damage at yeah. this point, but it, the game slows down to mm -hmm. a snail's pace. It does. Here. You have. Turn, turn one now, passing over. That is, you turn one. One yep. turn, Kyle, to close out this game. One and it is, turn. <laughs> it is so difficult if Kieran does, doesn't give you prize cards and yep. open up for Blood Moon. Exactly. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much on Kieran now to, uh, to figure this out. Timer was called on Kyle's turn. That's turn zero. Kieran should be turn one now. So we're talking about three additional turns. Kyle will have an additional one. Kieran will have another one. And uh, so now, as you said, other Kyle. We're working at a snail's pace. We can slow down a bit here, not too much, but to uh, to get some more some more things cracking. We're seeing that Lugia V Star out now. The damage that was put on there is buffed up a little bit here. We're going to see its HP go a little higher now, and Kieran's got a couple more cards to work with from the hand as well. Man, well, could a Blood Moon have been a Duskull at some point? Could you play it a little bit faster at one of these stages? These are the questions that Kyle's going to be thinking about as he moves into that final round, but the math just doesn't line up for you at this stage. You need your opponent to to fumble, and Kieran, it's not going to play no a way. on for you, right? No, Kieran is not a fumbler, that is for sure. It's uh, one thing I've never seen from him. Uh, capturing Aroma being rolled here, that's going to be a heads. That's an uh, evolution Pokemon, so that's our second Archaeops now coming out. But... Yep, we're in the turn tier, Kyle. What, so what do you what do you see happening? The here? only thing that would work for Kieran is if he still had access to the Legacy Energy. You take a knockout at this point, and then you go for the Iron Hand Squawk ability, clean up three prize cards, get all five in the next two turns, mm -hmm. and you could win the game. But he doesn't play that additional Lightning Energy that we see some players incorporate. Uh, sometimes they have that. Yeah, I feel like it's rarer. Package. Rare to see, but yeah. This is this has to just be past the turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't put anything else out. You're chilling right now in turns. Is going to pick up the card here. Read it. Just cool make card. sure. Yeah, cool card. Haven't seen this one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yes, right? Uh, well, this is the fresh Lugia V Star now coming into the active thanks to that jet energy, jetting it up into the front. We're ta having a talk between these players. We see a fist bump here. That's going to be our game. Yep. The, uh, the, the, the sulking, shrugging. Oh, yeah. man. Well, guess nobody gets it. <laughs> exactly. Which it, is it does happen. It's unfortunate. It's it, I mean, when you're playing at this at the big stage here and you're trying to make sure that you play near flawlessly, uh, show off the power of your deck and also make sure you play fast enough that you don't run into time issues. It's a lot to ask of both of our players. And for Kyle, it just got to him at this point, just did not have enough time to close out. Oh. We can take a look at how this match went. Maybe uh, maybe uh, divulge further into what the issues we saw. 
Yeah, I mean, well, this is throwing it all the way back to our first game where things were actually in Kyle's favor. We saw that early knockout on the Lugia V, getting two prize cards down. We saw that pressure continuing to uh, uh, put things on here from Kyle. The Radiant Greninja getting damage out. Kieran had to recover with the Weird Ear, but it was not the solution we were looking for. And it was not enough to work through what Kyle had already set up on the board. We saw um, those evolutions come out. I mean, this was wild. The rare yeah. candy and Dusknor <laughs> off the Mew EX restart. That was pretty cool to see. This is our game two. Yeah, this was uh, pretty quick from Kieran, taking advantage of the Palkia V as the lone Palkia in play for Kyle. He was just scrapping at this point, and this was a pivotal moment. 16 yes. minutes left, boss's orders on the Pheasantipity. It is near impossible to come back from this stage. Kyle was finding all of the correct lines in a vacuum mm -hmm. that you should do at this stage to close out. Doesn't take the knockout, plays around the gift energy, puts himself in a situation where maybe you could make a comeback if your opponent gets unlucky, is not able to find boss's orders. Thankfully for him, though, Mesa Gosa flips heads. Yeah, and look you, at your that. Your opponent finds Woo! the mini on and has to go fast, too. But it mm -hmm. just it doesn't leave you enough time to, to go into this game three. And we saw Kyle was at a huge, advantageous stage at this point. Yes, what look at Kyle, that. What does Kieran look do? At it. He has single Archaeops. Exactly. He hasn't found any resources. He lost his legacy energy. And Kyle's clearly going to win in two to three turns and just could not find the answer because he didn't have enough time. Yeah, and that's and that's really what it came down to. It was asking that, oh, if I had just either scooped earlier when, I mean, the everything was, was working against you, uh, where you know that you could have a play like that in a game three, we just needed that, like, one additional turn. Yeah. I, I hate when it comes down to that, but at least it's teaching everybody else who's watching these stream matches that pivotal lesson. It was to, 20 seconds no. of gameplay that we were away from at that point. If yes. he's able to pass the turnover, become turn one, turn one and turn three, I feel like he finds that answer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it was the, the difference in that turn, the difference between a Dusclops and a Dusknor, the difference between that HP that needed to be cleaned up. I mean, it was a lot that, that came down to. So it is going to be a tie between those players there. So, but I mean, we still saw two very good games. Like yeah. I think both of those players at our table uh, definitely shaped things up pretty great for us on the stream match. So thank you for that. But they're going to have to work a little harder